the call of the year. Let's go the other way. What did the $100 over a barrel people get wrong? They got wrong uh, both supply and demand, but more, more on the demand side. I mean, this was supposed to be a year, depending on whose projection you're looking at, that was going to continue that 5 or 6% demand growth uh, post-pandemic. And it just fritted out. It fritted out largely because of something nobody expected, namely uh, the pace of the slowdowns and the recessions emerging in the mm -hmm. three largest economies in the world, China, the U.S., uh, and obviously Europe. So uh, the demand side really is the, 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 the big killer on this. Uh, we're looking at probably maybe 1.7 percent uh, demand growth this year compared to projections of 4, 4 percent or above. Right. Well, what's interesting, Ed, to me is the prices we come down and everyone's rationalizing along the way to a price point where Riyadh reacts or Washington reacts, et cetera. What is the price point you have in your head where this becomes painful for the oil winners? Uh, well, the price point when it comes really painful is going to be below 65. There's plenty of oil that can be productively, uh, uh, you know, exploited at, at 70. Uh, we start getting into uh, some fields that just don't work at 65, but uh, it gets unbelievably painful below 55. But we still have, and you just remarked on it, uh, the U.S. government having indicated it might start buying oil if WTI falls below 70. And I think that's the first test. I think OPEC has said, hey, we're going to stick to this. We're not going to change forecasts. Uh, we're not going to change our, our, uh, our oil projections of what we're putting in the market. Uh, maybe evaluate them in February, the next time uh, their JMMC, the monitoring committee, meets. So uh, I think the next political move on managing the market will be up to the U.S. Ed up to the U.S.? How so? What are you looking for? Well, I, I, I go back to uh, the president's point that uh, at $70 a barrel, they can start buying back oil for the strategic reserve. Uh, and that's meant as an encouragement to the industry to keep drilling and to keep producing. So uh, we'll, it'll be a test to see what happens uh, and whether the president is serious about this or thinks that, hey, maybe this is the time when we're really getting off of oil uh, oh. because demand for it may be falling you know, faster than people thought. Why are we talking about the downside surprise at a time when China is potentially reopening, when these headlines don't seem to be moving the needle at all, even though this is definitely a big concern and people thought that perhaps it could send oil prices to $125 a barrel on Brent? Well, I take exception to that. You know, we had the China news that really did move the market. It moved the market up a little bit higher than the fundamentals warranted. And now we're having the good news in the U.S., the good news about the economy, which is really bad news in terms of the commodity markets, because it indicates that the Fed is going to keep going and raising the prices at the prior level that people thought. Uh, so the dollar gets more expensive, the economy slows down more, and demand for oil falls. So I think the, the, the market is responding to news. It's just today's news is the good news in the U.S. Last week's news was the good news in China. But it's also this week, uh, this week that we're getting some news about China perhaps loosening some of the testing requirements in Beijing after reducing them in Shanghai just yesterday. How much does this sort of come together in something that does accelerate demand more than perhaps the base case, or is that not even on the table because of how much much the Russian barrels are coming back on. I just am not understanding the price action at all right now, uh, based on some of the narratives people have been saying for a while. Well, the first thing you have to remember about the price action is liquidity has dried up even more than it already dried up. People are fleeing the market because of the level of market uncertainty and because we're getting toward the end of the year. And those who made money this year don't want to lose any come the end of the year. So liquidity has dried up. And when liquidity dries up, you get an incredible volatility coming out in the market. I think that's a, a very important point. The second point is the uncertainty about Russian oil. Uh, we thought that there was going to be a significant increase in demand for uh, oil from other sources uh, as Europe moved off of Russian oil. We actually had that, and it was an incredible increase in exports out of the United States. A week ago, the print was about 11,700,000 barrels a day of gross exports of crude oil and petroleum products out of the U.S. The U.S. has been replacing those Russian mm -hmm. barrels. And, uh, you know, we've had our inventories fall on the crude side 
but they're rising on the product side. Uh, you know, this was right. supposed to be a period of time when diesel demand was going to be high and diesel cracks were going to stay at 40 and now diesel cracks are going down and we're actually building an inventory. Right. So the data are mixed, but they're, they're you know, they're equally bearish as they are bullish. Uh, 